So yeah, thank you everybody for allowing us to change up the schedule a little it's bit. And I table. am so excited for Autumn coming up here. So I'm going to tell you this, and she's going to probably yell at me for saying this. That's okay. But we wouldn't be here if it wasn't for Autumn. So three years ago? Yes. Three years ago, we're watching Autumn's channel. And I don't know, there was something about Autumn that just, screamed at me like she's like you guys she cares because our whole thing was we want to build the community even before we knew we wanted to build the community if that makes sense at all um and we were watching her and i'm like there's just something about autumn i don't know what it is but there's something about her and we had just made the decision that we were going to go to KetoCon, and we were actually gifted the tickets by subscribers we had 250 subscribers so we made this decision and i'm like Autumn had just announced she was going to do this challenge with her community. We have 250 subscribers. I think she had 20,000 subscribers. Right. And we're like, and she's like, I'm going to do a cut down to KetoCon. And so I messaged her. I'm like, would you do a collaboration with us? And she was like, absolutely. And we were like, wait, what? Because we're not worthy. We're right. not worthy. And... Autumn really just gave us a confidence to have a channel, and she gave us inspiration to build this community. And that's why if you go look at our subscribers and Autumn subscribers, they're almost the same subscribers. Yeah. And a lot of it is just because she's built this community because she cares so much, and it's you just it pours out of her when you speak. You just heard it for like two seconds. That's, and when you see her speak, it's even more. So yes. I'm gonna let you read her bio. Yes, because like, I'm I'm if this does not say that she is actually Wonder Woman, and I've never seen Wonder Woman and Autumn in the same space. So I'm sorry. That that's what I, I, I think is the case. Okay. So in July 2017, Autumn completely transformed her life, health, and her diet. After a lifetime of being overweight, unhappy, and hopeless, she sought guidance from the most knowledgeable being on the planet, Google. <laughs> Basically, she just Googled food to help you feel better. As she was suffering from yet another flare-up following her diagnosis of Crohn's disease in 2015, on that day, Autumn fell down an internet wormhole and learned everything she could about how to start the ketogenic diet. From there, her life was never the same. Keto has taught Autumn that it is possible to gain control, eat nutritiously, enjoy food, and live at a healthy body weight. She uses her YouTube platform, Watch Autumn Keto, to help others achieve those same possibilities. In 2021, Autumn founded the keto apparel brand Keto Strong so she could share her love of keto with the world and help others do the same. She is also the founder and host of Keto Palooza. Hope you've got your tickets already. An annual keto conference in her hometown of Louisville. I'm gonna get, I'm gonna say it right one year. Kentucky. During her downtime, Autumn enjoys playing bingo, watching TV, and hanging out with her amazing husband, Richard. It is our pleasure to introduce our good friend, Autumn, Autumn Weathers. Weathers. Thank you so much. I love you guys. I appreciate them so much. And you know, the beautiful thing about Joe and Rachel, just as much as they claim to love me. I love them right back, and I am so proud. I started my YouTube channel in 2017, and I'll talk a little bit about that, but when they reached out to me to, uh, to do that cut down to KetoCon, they had, what, 250 subscribers? Uh, I am so proud to say that as of today, they have surpassed my channel, and they now have more subscribers than I do, and the, the mid-30,000s, and I'm just so proud of you guys, and I'm so excited to be here to share my story with you today. If I pr oh, yes, getting back on track. After weight gain on keto, right? Also, your goal weight is a lie. So let me tell you about this. Funny story, in January, Miriam reached out to all of us speakers and was like, hey, go ahead and give us some, uh, you know, some thoughts about what you might want to talk about uh, for your talk. So I sent in some subjects, and I kind of forgot about it after that. Uh, and then a couple months went by, and all of my friends and family on YouTube, they were like, hey, we know you're going to Keto Salt Lake. What are you going to be talking about? And I was like, that's a great question. I don't know. Uh, and so I reached out to Miriam about um, two to three weeks ago and was like, hey, Miriam, what? What am I going to be talking about? And she sent me back 
your, your subject is getting back on track after weight gain, uh, on weight regain on keto. Also, your goal weight is a lie. And I said, oh, January autumn knew exactly what April autumn needed to hear, right? And so I was just so grateful that that's what I get to talk about and share with you today. And so just like Abby, I am uh, a storyteller and I'll be telling you my story. And maybe if you see some of yourself in my story, um, that might help you uh, work Wherever you are in your journey and be able to, you know, we're all going through this thing together, right? So we, we're all moving forward and learning and growing from each other. Just like Joe said, Dr. Barry's just been such a big, um, you know, just believer and encourager. Like everyone's story matters. Whether you have a YouTube channel, whether you have an Instagram, just living your everyday life around the people that you're around, that matters. So keep doing that. Okay, so for me, who am I, right? I, as mentioned, I'm not a doctor, I'm not an author, I'm not anyone, I'm just a person, right? I'm just a person that has struggled with weight my entire life. And I'm sure like most of you, tried everything. Weight Watchers, Jenny Craig, the Master Cleanse. Does anyone remember that with the lemon juice and the honey and the cayenne pepper? What were we thinking, right? Like just anything to lose weight because that's what we wanted. And all I ever wanted to know, all I ever wanted to know was how were people supposed to eat? Because just like um, Amy said, it, it looks easy for some people. All they have to do is stop drinking soda. Boom, they lose 40 pounds, right? I was like, oh, you, all you have to do is not eat bread? Sure, who cares? Like, that wasn't me. And I was like, how are people supposed to eat and like what they eat every day and still like the way they look and like the way they feel? I never was able to find the answer to that question until keto. So these are just some pictures, some before and after, some before and durings, um, you know, just showing how I was able to change my life and my perspective on food uh, and my relationship with it. And when I found keto in 2017, I thought it fixed everything, right? Uh, or so I thought, dun, 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 right? We're going we're gonna to get right into the lessons that I've learned and continue to learn to this day. And I thought the best way to do that would just be a, um, a timeline, a weight loss journey timeline in pictures. So go with me on this journey, will you? This is me and my sister at age four, right? We are dressed up for Halloween in um, fast food worker costumes. Our mother taught us to aim high, even then. Thanks, mom. This is what you could be if you apply yourself, right? And so I put this picture up because this is me and my sister around four or five. This is probably the last time we were a similar age or a similar size. So people ask, did you guys dress alike as children? Did, you know, did your mom dress you in the same thing? She did until she couldn't any longer. And this is how I spent most of my uh, teenage years. I am on the left, and that is me with those chubby cheeks and the glasses, and my sister, my very thin sister, sitting next to me celebrating our 17th birthday. Uh, my mother has us take a picture like this on our birthday every year to this day. Uh, we'll be 37 in July, and we have pictures. I think we're missing two years out of our entire life, so it's absolutely awesome, and it was great for this presentation to say I have a, a timeline of literally the changes that we've gone through that I've gone through, but I spent most of my childhood and early adult life being the chubby twin, right? You know, like, are you the smart one? Are you the tall one? Are you the, I was the chubby twin, right? And so that is how I, I was identified most of my childhood and teenage years. And then we moved to my early 20s and I look like that pretty much till I graduated college, right? Most people gain the freshman 15. I don't know what happened. I lost the freshman 50, right? Like I lost tons of weight during college and that was what I got down to. And I was like in the 160s and I was feeling good. And you know, the thing, the funny thing is, Abby talked about how she hadn't you know, weighed herself in eight months because she doesn't care anymore. I weigh myself every day for the exact same reason, because I don't care, right? I use it as a tool to show my uh, YouTube friends and family, like, I don't care what this number says. I really don't. And so that's why I'm going to share with you the numbers uh, as we're going through this, just to show how drastic the change is, but then also how little that really ends up mattering in the end. So you're going to see my life as marked by these major, these weight milestones. So for me, I had gotten down to that weight thanks to this guy. Who knows who that is? That is Sean T. 
from beach body insanity, right? Like in, in, early, in my early 20s, I was obsessed with Shanti and I was obsessed with these harsh workout programs and I got really into exercising and I got really into fitness, what I thought was fitness. And this was really the first program, Insanity, that I made it a point to stick to, right? Because if you know anything about Beachbody, they have these exercise programs, but then they also have these diets that go along with it, right? These really strict standard American dieting diets of chicken breast and brown rice and rice cakes and Shakeology, like all of that, like steamed broccoli, right? Just all the standard, standard American dieting food. And on the outside, when I was doing Insanity, I looked thin, I was excited. I used to mark my life by the times where I weighed less than my twin sister. That was my entire life. Like, oh my gosh, I weigh less than you for these three weeks. Like, my life is complete, right? It was a goal of mine to just weigh less than her for any reason. And I was disciplined. I looked disciplined. I looked like, wow, she's locked in. She's in the zone. She's got it going on. And as I was going through this insanity program, on the outside, I looked great. But on the inside, some really dark stuff was starting to develop. I noticed, you know, even though I was so obsessed with sticking to that diet, that I was like, no matter what, I'm gonna eat the food on the page. They wrote the food on the page, I'm eating the food on the page. But in my mind, there was this finish line. I gotta do this for 60 days. Once insanity's over, I'll be done. So I noticed myself starting to hoard food. I'd be like, oh, it was around Easter. So I was like, oh, I can't have this Easter candy now, but I'll wait till insanity's over. It was Girl Scout cookie season. I can't have these Girl Scout cookies now, but, but when insanity's over, I'll get to them, right? And so I started to separate things as to this is good food, this is the food that is, is right, but then this is the secret food that I really wish I had that I can't eat right now, but I'm going to save it until the time when I'm done. I'm going to save it to when I can have it. And at the, on the inside, as I was doing it, I was panicked. I was just obsessive. You ever seen those 80s movies montages where people are working out really hard and they're sweating and they're like, I don't care, I'm going to pump harder. I was obsessed with doing it in a way that wasn't out of, of health and, and happiness and pride, but it was out of shame and it was out of trying to work the bad habits out of me. I was just obsessed and I was still not happy with my body. When I got to the 160s, I thought... This, when I weighed less than my sister, this is going to be the thing that makes me like who I am finally, like what I look like finally, and it still didn't. And because of that, that's where the disorder came. That's where I started to realize, like, okay, this food is good, this food is bad, I really don't like this food, but it's what I'm supposed to eat to look this way. This is the food I really want that makes me feel good, but I can't have it right now, so let me store it away until I can have it. And that was the first time. At the end of Insanity, I was at my goal weight, which at the time was the 160s. I had finally done it. I was at my goal weight for 45 minutes. No lie. <laughs> Because what I did is I took, I took a bunch of after pictures. Oh, I was standing there. I was like, yes, from the side, flexing. I took all the pictures, right? And then I proceeded to spend the entire day binging on all the food that I had set aside, right? Eating everything all at once, all in one sitting. And it was the first time in my life where I had ever eaten so much that I made myself sick. My body was just like, what are you doing? You can't go from 1,200 calories a day of bird food to all of this huge junk sugar madness. And that began my, my decade long, uh, you know, just restrict really, really hard and then binge really, really hard and restrict really, really hard and then just binge really, really hard, right? That, I looked back on it and that started it. And I spent the next pretty much five years in the same way. So now we're moving on to my late 20s. Um, I had gotten up to the 180s, and I was just like, okay, well, I am lower than I used to be, but like, I'm just gaining weight because you, you can never stay on track for as long as it takes to make up for how long you've been off track, right? You can be on track for 60 days and, and see some results, and then you can be off track for two days and lose all those results right back, right? So you can never stay on track long enough. And so I ended up up in the 180s. But these are some pictures. I made the most of it. I, ended up, I did some plus-size modeling. I was like, oh, hello, Lane Bryant. Well, sure, you know, this is what you're doing. And so I tried to make the most of it. And on the outside, 
I looked confident, like, you know, I look statuesque. I look like, yes, this is what I'm intending to look like and this is how I choose to look. And I look content. I'm a person that's like, things look like they're going pretty good for you. Like, it's okay if nothing ever changed because this is all right. But on the inside, I was disappointed. I was just like, oh, I felt like a failure, gained so much weight. Once again, I weighed more than my sister did again, right? I had to move back on the other side of like, oh, this is not where I'm supposed to be. I felt lost. I felt sad. I, was, I just knew that like I had gotten down to this weight once. I should still be there again. And I was self-sabotaging because I knew that with my restricting and binging and restricting and binging, I was never going to be able to hold on to any long-term success. So what was the point of trying at all? Any, anytime I got close to two to three to four weeks on plan, I could just feel it slipping away. And I'm like, instead of feeling like a failure, instead of just you know going off the rails unplanned, let me just go ahead and do it anyway. I know it's going to come down the way anyway. So let me just eat that way. Let me just blow it all up right now so that I don't have to fail in in the future. And to top all of that off, as mentioned in my bio, I was diagnosed with Crohn's disease in 2015. And so um, I had this little bitty pain in my abdomen. I honestly, honest to goodness, thought that I had pulled a muscle at the gym. I was like, oh, those sit-ups must have really done it, right? Because I got this little muscle ache right here. And it persisted for a whole week. And my mother was like, mm, nope, go to the doctor. Nope, we're not having this. We don't, we don't have pain that persists. So I went to the doctor. And the only reason they knew to check for it is because of family history. My father has Crohn's. My grandmother has it. And so when I presented with this, like, I just got this little speck of pain right here. They did a CT scan, and they immediately admitted me to the hospital. They were like, Autumn, go to the hospital right now. And I was like, what are you talking about? And they were like, go to the hospital. Your bowel is about to perforate. Like, you're in serious trouble. And I was like, no, you must be, excuse me, wrong person. Like, I feel fine. I just have a little speck of, of a pain right here. And it turned out that I spent five days in the hospital receiving intravenous anti-inflammatories. And it turns out, from what the doctor said, my intestines had been inflaming and scarring and inflaming and scarring for up to five years at that point. But I was completely symptom free. I didn't know. And so they put me in the hospital. They gave me my drugs. My, my inflammation was down. They sent me home and they were like, congratulations. Now you have a gastroenterologist. Like that's literally all they said. They didn't say, they, they didn't say anything about how I ate. They were like, if you feel fine, then you're fine. If anything, they told me to go on a low fiber diet, which once again, just contradicted everything that I had known from my standard American dieting weight loss years. You want fiber. You eat the brown rice and the whole wheat. And like, you want to get fiber in your diet. So now you're telling me to have a low fiber diet, but they didn't even tell me what that looked like. They just said, hey, have a low fiber diet. But if you're not feeling bad, you don't have to change anything, right? And that just in itself is a shame, but it's still, it's the way that they treated it. So for the next couple of years, I didn't have to change anything. I was like, well, I feel fine. I'm out of the hospital. And I, I had just given up. I was just like, you know what? There's no point. I've, I've been trying to hold on to, this, to these weights and my weight just keeps steady climbing and climbing and climbing and nothing's going to change. And that's when I just let myself go. Over the next two years, so leading up to January 2017, I just let myself go. I thought, well, I guess I'm just supposed to be a fat person. I guess I'm just overweight. Food tastes too good. It's just too hard. There's no point. Nothing's working. I can't stick to something. Even if it does work, I can't stick to it. So what is the point of even trying? And that's what led me to my highest weight ever, January 2017, of 232 and a half pounds. Yes, those half pounds. And this was the first time in my life where I had just ever gotten to a number on the scale that I did not recognize. And on the outside, it was drastic weight gain. You could just tell. It was in my face. It was in my arms. It was in everything. I had just let myself go. I didn't care. On the inside, I was, I was even more desperate. I was even more lost. And I was just sad and depressed. And that's just because I didn't know what to do. Once again, even after being in the hospital, even talking with my gastroenterologist, no one could answer the question, what are people supposed to eat? How are people supposed to eat? So 
In January 2017, I started all over again, right? I'm like, I'm hopping on the standard American diet, you know, bandwagon. And that's why I took these pictures. How many secret before pictures do we all already have, you know? We're just like, I'm, I'm taking these pictures because one day I'm going to be able to show this comparison. It's going to be really dramatic. It's going to be really awesome. And we just have tons of before pictures that never see the light of day because we never get to this after that we're going for. So the only reason I have these is because in January I committed, you know what, I am going to be this person. And so I went back onto the standard American dieting diet, 1,500 calories a day, uh, mostly consisting of lean cuisine pizzas, 100 calorie packs of Oreos. I was doing everything right. Like as long as I was counting my points, I was counting my calories, I could eat whatever I want because we all know it doesn't, it doesn't matter what you eat. It only matters how much of it you eat, right? And that's all that I thought. But I noticed in July 2017, I started to feel horrible every time I ate. Every time I ate something, it felt like my intestines were balloons and somebody was making balloon animals. Like every time I ate, it was just twisting and the nodding. And I was just like, oh my gosh, why? Why is this happening? It hurts, ouch, right? And I Googled something that changed my life. I just Googled food to help you feel better. That's because that's all I wanted. Like at that point, even though up until that point, weight loss had been my primary goal my entire life, I just wanted to feel better. And it was crazy because it was the first time that I had ever stopped to think about what food actually does. We all know that food can affect how much we weigh, eat more, weigh more, eat less, weigh less, right? That's what that's of course, that's how it always works. But this was the first time I ever realized Food can affect how you feel. Food can determine whether or not you feel good or you feel bad. Believe it or not, that was the first time in my life I had ever put those two together, right? So when I Googled food to help you feel better, the very first videos that came up were of Dr. Eric Berg and Dr. Ken Berry talking all about the keto diet. Might I just say, it is crazy that man back there, right? He, with his videos, life-changing videos, changed my entire life with teaching me how to eat the proper human diet, if you will. And he is coming to the very stage that I am standing on right now. Talk about a full circle moment, right? It's, just, it's crazy what you can accomplish when you just try to do something. So when I Googled food to help you feel better, I found keto. That's what they were talking about. Anti-inflammatory, you know, like helping you reduce infl inflammation. It was all keto. And not only that, people were losing tons of weight. I said, wait a minute, you're telling me I can feel better and I can lose weight. The two things that I had desperately wanted up to that point. And then you're telling me I can do it by eating meat and cheese and eggs and bacon and all this delicious stuff that I really wanted to eat anyways, because once again, on the standard American dieting diet, you don't get any of that fat, right? You don't get any of that flavor. And so I decided to go full-fledged for it. And that's when, and the, finally, I was scared when I was that large because it was the first time in my life where I had ever truly not felt like I was in control right? All those other times, I was, when I was eating, I was in control. When I was being really harsh and strict on myself, I was in control. When I was deciding to throw it all out the window and eat some more, I was in control, or so I thought, right? But this was the first time where I'm like, wow, I didn't intend to get this big. I didn't intend to feel this bad, but it was happening to me, and I couldn't stop it. And so that's when, in September 2017, I started the keto lifestyle. You might be saying, Autumn, you found out about keto in July and you started in September? Like, well, yes, type A. I had to do research. I had to do tons of research. I had to do tons of planning. Like, I had to just write out everything I was going to eat. Like, that's my personality. I had to have a plan. And so I finally started in September. And it was absolutely life-changing. I had finally found something that I could stick to that was delicious, that actually helped me and it made me feel good. And I felt like I finally found the answer, like, oh, this is what people are supposed to eat. And that prompted me to want to share my story with other people. And that's why when I started, I was 215 pounds, and that's why I started my YouTube channel, Watch Autumn Keto, because I wanted to show people, look, you guys, I'm telling you, if I can do it, you can do it. And I want to show you how, and I just want to show you that it's possible. So I started my YouTube channel, and I started my Facebook, Watch Autumn Keto, at Watch Autumn Keto. Uh, and just like uh, Rachel mentioned, I actually have my own event in Louisville, Kentucky now called Keto Palooza. Thank you, which they'll be at. 
presented by Keto Chow. Which they'll be at, right? Uh, and so a lot of the people from this conference will be there, plus so many more. So if you are near Louisville, near that area, if you, it's a quick road trip, plane drive, we'd love to see you at the end of September. If you need any information about that, at Watch Autumn Keto. Just let me know. But needless to say, I, I was kicking Keto's butt. I was disciplined. I was consistent. I was a pro at the superwoman pose. You couldn't get me out of in front of the gym, right? You couldn't take me away. I've got to go to the gym so I can take a picture in front of it to let everybody know that I am nailing this right now. I was thin on the outside. I was thin again, finally. I was back to that point of like, okay, this is where I'm supposed to be. I was weighing kind of the same as my sister, not less than, but the same, and that matters, that counts. I looked committed. I was like, wow, she finally found something that worked. And for the first time, I was actually happy on the inside. I was hopeful, like, oh my gosh, I might have found the thing I can stick with. I was satisfied because, hello, all the food that you get to eat, that's part of this amazing lifestyle. And I will say that I found so much success, so I decided to step it up a notch, right? I decided to go even harder and even further uh, and push myself to which I thought was a healthy, a good challenge, but it turned out it wasn't necessarily that case. So by the end of 2017, I was having so much success on keto that I wanted to take a step further. And in April 2018, I started a program called Deeper State Keto. Does anybody remember that program? It was created by Robert Sykes, the Keto Savage, and Matt and Mega from Keto Connect. I was big into YouTube, big into um, that community. And so they started this, they had this program called Deeper State Keto that was a 90 day cutting program. And it was really intense and it was just gonna get you into the best shape of your keto life, right? And I was like, you know what? I'm gonna do that. Cause see, I'm nailing keto. Let me just like take it up a notch. Let me do even more. Let me get even stricter. Let me go even further. And when I started Deeper State Keto, I was 169 pounds. I had already lost so much weight, um, but I was like, I want more. I want to step it up a notch. I want to do even more. And that's when I got to my lowest recorded weight ever, 155 pounds. And I put a star there because that was my goal, was to be under 160. I didn't care what it was. I just wanted to be under 160. And so weighing 155 pounds was the best time of my life is what I'd like to tell you, but that's just not true, right? It's not the case. I got down super low. And you look, look at that number before. That was 169. I would give anything to be 169 right now, right? But it was not good enough. I had to get lower. I had to get even more. And that's where the 155 came in. It was my goal weight. It was the weight that I just knew was gonna fix everything. It was the weight where if I could just see this number on the scale, that is when I'm gonna be the person that I finally wanna be. That's when I'm gonna look how I wanna look. This is what's going to change everything. And on the outside, I looked disciplined. I looked awesome. And I looked successful. I was like, oh, I lost the weight. I sent in my before and afters. I looked absolutely amazing. But on the inside, I was a wreck. And I'm gonna say, as a disclaimer, this was not Deeper State Keto's fault, right? The program had very, very strict and detailed instructions about how to onboard and how to offboard, right? How, because they, they didn't want it to be another extreme crash diet. They wanted it to be a healthy way to cut fat if that's what you were trying to do. But I was like, I don't need any of that. I'm an expert at this keto thing. Just tell me how many calories to start with and let's go. And that's what we did. And for 90 days, I just kept getting lower and lower and lower and lower. And I became obsessed with just being perfect at it. And that started to sound familiar. And it started to sound like insanity. Because on the inside, I was panicked. I was worried about every morsel of food I put in my mouth because I knew that it was gonna cause me to gain weight. And the only thing I had left was this weight, was this 155, like that was the only thing I had. I didn't have joy, I didn't have happiness, I didn't have a lot of food, but I had that number on the scale. And I was panicked that every piece of food I put in my mouth would change that. I was angry all the time, scratch that, hangry all the time. I was hungry and I was mad. And by the end of the program, I was down to 1,300 calories a day. And I'm 5'10". I'm a large lady. That's just not enough food for me. And so I was constantly angry. 
And not only that, I was irritable. I was in a bad mood. I just didn't want to be bothered by anyone. Don't look at me. Don't talk to me. I'm focused on being skinny right now. I don't want to hear none of this. And I remember a moment in particular, once again, my birthday's in July in Deeper State Keto. It was two weeks from being over. My mom bought some, trying to be a mom, trying to be nice. She was like, I'm going to buy something to make you happy. She brought me this little tin of popcorn, like gourmet popcorn that has like the chocolate drizzled on it. And instead of, you know, giving it away or just being like, oh, I'm just, I don't want that right now. I like scream. I flipped out. I was like, why would you buy this for me when you know I can't have it? You're torturing me. How dare you? You're a bad mother. I, I would nuts because she bought me a tin of popcorn. I could have just said, no, thank you. Right. But I was so so mad all the time. And I looked at that as just like a symbol of everything I'd never be able to have again, right? The deprivation that was the only thing that was ever going to get me to where I really wanted to be, right? And I look back and I'm just like, wow, you were nuts. Like you were crazy back then, all so that you could hold on to that number. And so I was also physically weak, just like Coach Bronson said, you know, about like improving your fitness and your health. Yeah, I was losing weight on the scale, but what was I losing, right? Was it fat? Was it muscle? Because I was physically weak to the point where it interfered with my everyday life. I couldn't lift groceries. I couldn't lift, help, you know, help move furniture. I couldn't do the things that I was used to being able to do because I was not strong enough, because I didn't have the strength all because I wanted to hold on to that number. And finally, I felt dread because even then, I knew I wasn't gonna be able to stick to it. I just knew, I, I was just like, you know what, this program's over in two weeks and I'm gonna do the same thing I did last time and I'm just gonna go nuts. And, cause there's no way I can uphold this. I'm not happy, it's not fun, and I just know that this isn't going to last. So guess what happened? The Saturday morning, I stepped on that scale, I saw 155, for a cool 30 minutes. I was like, yes, Autumn, take those pictures. And by this point, once again, I had a YouTube channel, so go back and watch that video. 155 pound Autumn, she looked happy. She looked like she had it all going together. But it was a different story. So I took those pictures, I recorded that number, and instead of spending a couple of days going off the rails, I spent a couple of weeks going off the rails. I spent a couple of months going off the rails because I had had it. Restriction is just not supposed, it's not supposed to be that hard. It's not fair that it's that hard and that you have to do that extreme stuff. So I just rebelled against it. I was like, no, screw it. I don't even want to be a skinny person anymore. I don't even want to be a healthy person anymore. I just want to eat what I want to eat and I want to feel good, right? And so as I kept binging and then trying to restrict again and binging and restrict again, because once again, that number was just my reality months, months ago, right? And what I didn't realize is that something else was happening on the inside that entire time. So in January 2019, back up to 185, right? So what is that, a six months difference? And that's 30 pounds gained right there. And if you remember, 185 is higher than the 169 that I was when I started Deeper Stay Keto. So just like, um, was it Amy that said, you not only do you lose, did you gain more weight, you gain more weight than the initial weight that you had lost to begin with. And so I had not only gained 30 pounds, but I went back in the hospital for bowel resection surgery. My doctor was like, you know what? Your Crohn's disease has progressed too far, even though I was managing it with medication and sometimes my diet, right? It just wasn't working anymore, it wasn't helping. So I had to go back into the hospital for bowel resection surgery. And even though I had a successful surgery with a successful recovery, you know, thank goodness, it just totally made me realize and reevaluate everything I was doing, right? This is not only about my weight, it's not only about seeing that number on the scale, but it was about like health. Like I, like being in the hospital is serious. I want it to be no longer a person that just weighed a certain amount, like I wanted to actually be a healthy person from the inside out. So the focus had to become and stay about my health. Now, moving into March 2020, it just drove home the fact that yes, Keto taught me a lot, but I had a lot to learn. And my focus started to shift. Right after January 2019, my focus started to shift. And I remember that I was heading toward another major milestone in my life. And I remember for a fact that I weighed 188 pounds on my wedding day. Pew, pew, pew. 
This is me and my husband Richard on our wedding day, looking as happy as can be. Anyway, so anyone from my YouTube channel knows that I met my husband Richard in March 2019, right after my surgery. But I kept him in a whole entire secret. Um, I was posting on YouTube every day, and no one saw him for an entire year. Because I was like, I'm not letting you up into my YouTube business on camera, and then this not work out. Like, this is not what we're going to explain to people, right? So I had been building this entire relationship on, you know, with Richard as I was living my YouTube life. But we got engaged on Christmas and on March uh, 9th. Thanks, honey. March 9th, 2020. <laughs> We got married, I know, as was a test, I passed, a year to the day that we met. So on the outside, I looked quite voluptuous, if, if I do say so myself, right? Like I was like, I look good, I'm filling out this little jumpsuit, these curves are working, and I looked happy, which I was, I very much was. But on the inside, I was thinking about my weight, right? I was just thinking about how I would look in these pictures. And how many times have we done that? How many times have we been taken out of the moment of something great that's going on because we're wondering how we'll look? Or we're just sad that we don't look the way that we wanted to look, right? But also, I was happy on the inside. Has anyone seen my smoke show of a husband? There, yes, I'm talking about that guy. So trust. I was happy on the outside and the inside. Uh, and immediately after our wedding, once again, March 9th, 2020, we went right into the pandemic. We went right into it, right? They tell, yes, they tell us. If our wedding had, would have been a week later than it was, of four days later than it was, we wouldn't have been able to do anything because the entire country went on lockdown. And I told myself, this is the perfect time to refocus, to rededicate, you know, to, to recommit to the diet. But it just didn't happen, right? I was focusing on, you know, a lot of changes, newlywed, being on lockdown, just things. I wasn't focusing on my diet and weight, and days turned to weeks, and weeks turned to months, and months turned to years. And that brings us to today. That's me. That's what I look like today. And yes, I'm wearing the very dress that's in that picture <laughs> because... I, my husband took this picture, what, like five days ago? Because I really wanted to show, like, what do I actually look like? Because if we're being honest, I hadn't taken pictures of myself in a long time because I didn't feel good. I knew I had gained weight. And today, I sit around 200 pounds, right? And I, and I know that, and people in my YouTube community know that because I weigh myself. And I, I used to weigh myself every day and share it with them. Honestly, a couple of weeks ago, a couple, maybe a month ago, I was like, you know what, guys? This isn't bringing me joy. This probably isn't bringing you joy. I'll, look, I'll let you know if anything major happens. But the, the val there is no value in just sharing and obsessing with this number every Every day and so I sit around 200 pounds on any given day and on the outside you might notice noticeable weight gain from before or here's the crazy thing you may not right because when my husband took this picture of me I was expecting to look at it and be like oh god but I was like wait a minute okay she don't even look that bad right and it's crazy because we have these perceived notions like on the inside when we know we've gained weight we just like walk around in this shell of like oh everybody can probably tell that I'm gaining weight and they're all thinking things and they're like well, I haven't really noticed right and we have all this stuff built up in our head about how people see us and it doesn't even matter no one's even noticing and on the outside, it can look regressive. It can look like I'm sliding backwards because once again, the only way to show that you're being successful in this space is to keep getting smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller, right? Like that's the goal. Like you're not doing it right if you're not getting smaller and smaller and smaller. And I've even had people tell me like, you know what, Autumn, I can't watch your YouTube channel anymore because I just, I need to watch people that are continuously losing weight on, the, on keto. And I was like, sorry, not sorry. You know, like, you know, I, I wish you well on your journey, but like, that's not my story. And and if you watch anyone for long enough, that's probably not going to be their story either because it's just not the way that it works. And for a minute, I was really down on myself, um, that, you know, trying to get back to that person that I was, especially when you share your life on social media and you have a quote unquote following. Now there's this added layer of pressure to continuously be better because the thing about weight loss is like once you see a certain number on the scale, you can just never be happy until you're back immediately to that number, no matter what. Like, you're, you're constantly comparing yourself to that number. You'll be unfulfilled till you get back to that number. Everything you're doing is an effort to get back to that number, right? And so I felt unfulfilled for a long time. 
But here's what I noticed. On the inside, I was actually reprioritizing. A funny thing happened. I just realized I don't care. I truly do not care what the number on the scale says. It's a strange feeling to be 40 pounds higher than your lowest weight ever, right? When you're on a, when you're on a weight loss journey, to be 40 pounds heavier than your lowest weight, but to truly be happy, to truly be okay with how you are. I'm like, am I in denial? Do I really just, do I wish I was that way, but I'm trying to convince myself that I'm happy? Or they think, people think you've given up. Like, oh, you're just, you're saying you don't want to get back there because you know you really can't, so you're just, you're going to give up. But it's really something when you turn on the inside and realize what sort of life you want. So I'm reprioritizing. Just like Coach Bronson said, uh, and thanks to Joe and Rachel, I met Coach Bronson last year. He spoke at Keto Palooza, and I became obsessed with fitness after that. I was like, you know what? I'm about to get fit, right? And so I wake up, and I look at my exercise app. And just like Kim said yesterday, I don't recognize myself. I look at the things that, that ha- my app has me doing, and I used to think, oh, I can't. Oh, I don't want to do this. I hate this. I hate working out. Now I look at the app like, if I do all this stuff, I'm about to be buff. What? Like, I am excited. I am excited to do these things. I'm simplifying my diet. If you watched my YouTube channel in the past, I used to make these really complex, elaborate meal preps. And there's nothing wrong with that, right? It it helped a lot of people. It helped me. But if you watch my channel, I don't do that anymore because I don't need to. I eat beef, bacon, butter, eggs, you know, like I eat, I mean, sometimes some cheese, throw some keto chow in there, right? Like that's all I eat. And so everything has been simplified and I'm excited for the future. I'm excited for the things that I'm going to accomplish that have nothing to do with my weight. I'm excited about the ways that I'm going to grow. And most importantly, I'm happy now. For so many of us, if we gain weight, we, we, and we can't get happy, we can't be happy until we're back to where we were, right? It's like, I'm gonna be happy when I get back there. I don't need to be happy now, I don't deserve to be happy now because once I was really skinny and now I'm not anymore and I can't be happy till I become skinny again. I spent so much time thinking that that number, that 155, was everything. That number was going to turn me into the person that I wanted to be. That, that number was going to finally make me like the way I look in the mirror. I was going to finally be able to wear the size clothes I wanted. Once I hit that number, and it turns out it was all a lie. I stepped on the scale, and just like Abby said, I hated myself. I was just like, this is dumb. I don't, even, I don't like the way I look. I don't, I don't feel any different. I don't feel any better. If anything, I felt worse because I was weak because I was hungry, because I was angry. And I was like, everything that I thought that I would accomplish by hitting that number was an absolute lie. And so how do you beat a lie? You beat a lie with the truth. So these are my five tips for really regrouping uh, if you've experienced weight regain uh, on your keto journey. Number one, T, take it back to the beginning, okay? What worked in the beginning and why did it work, right? Did you, were you eating a a cleaner diet? Were you eating more relaxed? Were you eating consistently more often? Think about when you're on this journey for five, six, seven years, you can forget the person that you were in the beginning. All you remember was that like, wow, she was really on it. But like, but what did that mean? What were you actually doing? Think about that. Think about what you were doing, what worked, and why it worked. The R, remember why you started. Now this is, you know, people say remember your why all the time. Your why can change. But think about it like this. What kind of life do you want? What kind of quality of life do you want? What do you want to be able to do, right? And what kind of person do you want to be, right? Do you want to be the person that drives around the parking lot at the grocery store for 40 minutes trying to find the close spot? Or do you want to be the person that can just park wherever you want because you have the ability to just walk as far as it takes to get there and not think anything of it? What sort of person do you want to be? Here's the big one. Understand that it won't be the same as the first time you started, right? That's the biggest thing. Everyone's like, oh man, when I started keto, I lost so much weight. And then I kind of, you know, went off a little bit and I gained it back. But I'm, sw- I'm dedicated. I swear I'm dedicated. And it's not working. It's just not working this time. Why not? And just understand, it's not going to be the same. Like Nurse Cindy said, your enzymes got to readjust, right? But your body is adjusted. The newness, the shock is gone. And that's okay. And that is normal. It can be frustrating. Uh, but realize the thing, the most frustrating thing to realize is you're probably already doing everything right. You just have to give it more time. You just have to be more consistent. 
and T, throw the scale away. Now this is a little kitschy. You don't have to throw the scale away. I'm not one of those like the scale is the devil people like I know a lot of people are. Like if it helps you and if it's a good marker, fine, use the scale. But when I, want, when I say throw the scale away, think about what does that number actually mean? What, what do you think that is gonna happen when you reach a number that you can't be doing right now? What sort of person is that number gonna make you that you can't already be that person right now? The scale will never reward you for the hard work that you're doing. The scale does not care about you. So you, in turn, shouldn't care about the scale. I say it all the time. I, I step on the scale, I know I've been doing everything right and I feel great and I'm looking good and I step on the scale and it says 200, 201 and I'm like, okay scale, that's fine. Say your little numbers, do whatever you think you need to do but this is not affecting me at all because I know what I'm doing is right for my body. And H, have patience, right? Have hope, have something. Sustainable means forever. Just like Ben Azadi said earlier, have the positive thought to know that things will get better. Things are already better, right? You can stop and look and say that things, you're probably not thinking of the ways that things are already better, right? So step back, have that gratitude, be excited, be grateful, and be hopeful in the future. So as I close, I'm gonna talk about a couple of the, the lessons that I've learned and that I'm still learning. Number one, keto doesn't automatically fix your issues with food, right? If, if you have addictive food personality, if you have, you know, disordered thoughts around it, keto goes a long way to help, but it doesn't automatically fix it. Just, just how I did the same destructive behavior with beach body insanity, I applied that same destructive behavior to deeper state keto, right? And that was no program's fault. That was my attitudes and behaviors toward those. Number two, understand your triggers. Understand what you just do not respond well to. And for me, that's restriction, right? And if people in my community know this, I can no longer do challenges, right? I'm gonna do a dairy-free challenge, I'm gonna do a whatever challenge. As soon as I hear the word challenge, I'm like, nope, I don't wanna do it because I can go you know, two months without having dairy, but the second you tell me I gotta do it for seven days because it's a challenge, like that's when I'm like, okay, two weeks after that, let's go. All the dairy, all the cheese, all the everything, simply because I'm gonna rebel against it. And I know that about myself. And so that's why I have to understand that I just can't participate in those things anymore. Never stop learning and experimenting, right? Never stop putting yourself in situations, having a plan saying, I'm gonna see if I can do this in this situation. Actually put yourself in the situation, see whether or not you're able to do what you wanted to or not, and then reassess and say, hmm, that didn't go the way I planned, or you know what, that was easy, I can do that. And for me, um, for instance, it was parties. So when you approach a party on keto, there's several different options. I'm gonna bring my own food, I'm gonna eat before I go, I'm gonna fast, I'm gonna do all these things. And for me, I was like, I'm gonna eat before I go. So I ate all my keto food and I went to a party and there was this big spread there and everyone was eating and I felt left out. And I was just like, I don't like not eating when other people are eating. So what I do, I was like, hey, I'm gonna fix my plate and it did not go as planned but I learned you know what I don't like to not eat when other people are eating so now I bring food so that they can have whatever they're having and I can snack on whatever I'm snacking on but I know because I try to experiment and I learned from that and then comparison even with yourself isn't positive, and especially with yourself, if you have regained weight, right? We think that nothing matters unless we get back to that number, right? We, in this community, we don't compare our journeys to others, like, oh, that person's shorter than me, or oh, that person has a different body type, but it's even more difficult when you've actually been there yourself, and all you can think about is that person that you used to be. And that's not even really it, it's just that weight that you used to weigh, because guess what? You're still the same person, you've always been that person, right? So don't compare yourself if, it, if you treat it in a negative way. And then focus on action-oriented goals. Don't say my goal is to lose five pounds by next week because once again, as we mentioned, the scale doesn't care about you. The scale's not gonna give you that five pounds, right? It just doesn't care, right? But what you can do is say, I'm committed to eating on track for the next seven days because you can control every aspect of that. I'm committed to drinking this much water every day because you can control that. So focus on action-oriented goals, not those results-oriented goals. I wanna lose five pounds. I wanna fit in this way. You can't control that. You can just control your actions. And then finally, you deserve to be happy now, not now, right now, 
Like right now, start being happy, right? Stop saying, I'll finally be happy when I lose this much weight. I'll finally be happy when I hit this number on the scale. I'll be happy when I can run a mile. I'll be happy when I can do this. Start being happy right now. Start being that person right now, and those things will come to you in time. But don't put off your happiness. Don't, eventually is never. Eventually is right now. You deserve to be happy right now. That's what I want you to know. All right, thank you so much for your time, and you can find me at these places.